Okay, let's continue. Uh, in this video, we start chapter one. Chapter one is equations and inequalities. Okay, equations and the inequalities. The first section, linear equations. Okay, so first let's review the basic properties of an equation. So an equation in one variable is a statement in which two expressions at least one containing the variable are equal. Okay, so this is a uh, equation. So for, for example, if we have one plus two is equal to three, it is not an equation because even though you have two expressions, they are equal, but both of them do not contain variable. So this is not an equation. Okay. Or if you have x plus one is equal to y plus two, it is not an equation in one variable. because it has x, it also has y. It's bad. So this is not an equation in one variable. You can say it is an equation in two variables. That is fine, but not in one variable. We only allow one, one unknown stuff. Okay, so for example, x plus one is equal to five. This is an equation in one variable. or you have x squared plus x is equal to neg uh, is equal to 1 this is an equation in one variable uh, it can be x it can be s it can be t whatever you just need one number a uh, one variable and again, we use x, y, z, s, t, u, v, w, whatever letter. But keep in mind, pi is a number, not a variable. So you cannot use pi to represent a variable. That is not allowed, forbidden. That is forbidden. Okay, uh, so if, for example, let's pick up those values that make the result or make this a uh, uh, The values of the variable that make the equality correct, true, make the equality true are called 
solutions. They're called solutions or rules. Okay, so for example, for x plus 1 equal to 5, x equal to 4, the values of x, this is the solution. root okay to solve an equation means to find all the solutions of the equation To solve an equation just means to find all the solutions, all the possible solutions. And some this one has one solution, so four is a solution. So we solve, we completely solve this equation. But sometimes an equation may have more than one solutions. For example, if we have x squared minus four equal to zero, it has two solutions x equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 2, right? It has two solutions. If you have more than one solutions, you put them together to form a set. This is called the solution set. A solution set means a set of all solutions. Some equation has more than one solution. Some equation has one solution, and some equation has no solution. x squared is equal to negative 1. We all know that a square is always non-negative, greater than or equal to 0. So this one has no solution. That's possible. Not every equation has solution. <coughs> <laughs> Not every equation has a solution. Some equation has no solution. Okay? And some equation take all values as a solution. Then it is called an identity. For example, if you have 2x is equal to x plus x. This is satisfied this equation is satisfied for all values of x. Well, this is a trivial case. We just say this is satisfied for all values of x. Then this type of equations is called an identity. Identity just means its solution set contains all the real numbers. You don't have to solve it. Every number will satisfy this uh, uh, will satisfy this equation. That's identity. Okay. So to solve an equation, it means we're going to do some mathematical deduction and eventually get the result. For example, when we have this equation, what, what are we going to do? We first move this 3 to the right side. We'll move a number or the expression across the equal sign. You change the sign. On the left side, it's a plus. On the right side, it becomes a minus. Okay? And then you copy this 2x. 2x is not changed. It's not moved, so it's always on the left side. It's still on the left side. 13 minus 3 is a 10. And then you're going to either you say let's cancel 2 or we divide the equation by 2. We get x equal to 5. 
all these stuffs can go from first to second, second to third, third to the final. All it can go backward. This, they are called equivalent equations. They're called equivalent equations. All three equations are equivalent. They can go back and forth. And the last one is simplest one. It directly gave you the solution set is 5. So the original equation has a solution set 5. This set contains just one number, right? So every time when you try to solve an equation, you always go from one to another to another equivalent equation and then to another equivalent equation until you can directly figure out the answer, okay? Sometimes you can say we find the equivalent equation and sometimes you can say we simplify the equation. All right. So in the textbook, it gave us the procedure that result in equivalent equations. Procedure that result in equivalent equations. Okay, uh, there's several steps which you can apply in order to get equivalent uh, equation. First, interchange two sides. Because we prefer to leave x to leave variable in the left hand side. If your original variable is not in the left hand side, you can exchange it. For example, your original equation is the 3 over x. We exchange, this is exchange. We exchange x and the 3, we will get x equal to 3. And this will give you the solution. Even though it, this is the same thing, but we prefer to leave the variable in the left hand side. Okay? So that's a exchange, it's not a move. And second, we can simplify the size. of the equation by combining terms, like terms, similar term, like term, or eliminating, eliminating parentheses And so on. So for example, if you have x plus 2 parentheses and plus 6, it is equal to 2x plus parentheses x plus 1. So how do you do that? Remember, parentheses, if in front of parentheses there's no sign or positive sign, you can directly remove the parentheses. This only works for, for the case when there's no sign or the positive sign. And then you combine the like terms, so it's x plus 8, it's a 2x plus x, it's a 3x plus 1. Okay? So this, by this process on two sides, you do them separately, you do not mix them, then you still have equivalent equations. And 3, 
you can add or subtract the same expressions. on both sides which means you see here we start from this place we are going to subtract 8 for two sides we subtract 8 for, from left side 8 minus 8 disappear we subtract 8 on the right side you will get minus 8 so, so. and now we are going to subtract x we subtract x from two sides because here you have x. So you get 0. Here you get 3x minus 7 and minus x. When you do subtraction, it looks like you move this x to the right side. You see here, you move 8 from left side to the right side. This is addition. That becomes subtraction. Here x, you move to the right side. It becomes subtraction. There's two ways to understand this movement. Either you just directly do subtraction subtracted, subtracted, from two sides. So 3x minus x, 2x minus 7. And then we add a 7 for two sides. We come up here, we add a 7 for two sides. And exchange them. OK? And so we get 2x equal to 7. Uh, step 4 we can multiply or divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero expression. Whenever you do addition multiplication here, for the equation, make sure it is not a zero. So for example, from here, we are going to divide this equation by two, or we say, yeah. So we divide everything, uh, left side, right side by two, you will get the expression, right? And another example in the textbook is the following. You have 3x over x minus 1 is equal to 6 over x minus 1. On two sides, they have the same denominator. And since they are denominator, they are not equal to 0. So here, x is not equal to 1. When x is 1, denominator is 0. OK, then since x minus 1 is not a 0, we are sure. We are sure it is not 0. So we multiply two sides by x minus 1. And then you can cancel x minus 1, x minus 1, you will get 3x is equal to 6. And then again, you divide the two sides by 3, you will get x equal to 2. Right? The final step, final equivalent stuff is a zero product property. If you have a b equal to zero then a is zero or b is zero or both are zero so this is a zero product property so the k the example is that if you already have the equation like this x times x minus three equal to zero the product is equal to zero then by the zero product property then you get x equal to zero or x minus three is equal to zero either first one equal to zero or the second one equal to zero okay and then this one you add a three for two sides you copy it x equal to zero it already provides a solution x minus three equal to zero you add a three for two sides x equal to three so the solution set will be zero and a three So you see, those five steps are the, re are the allowed, are the legal steps for us to find the equivalent equations in order to solve the equation.
any other thing which are not listed in this part and is not legal, it may contain this or that of that type of additional requirement. So those five steps are the commonly used steps. Okay, so try to we're going to try to uh, apply this to the situation. For example, we actually already did some example during the discussion, but in the case solve the equation 3x minus 5 equal to 4. Okay, I assume you have this type of problem. How do we solve it? So first, let's copy it here. And second, you have minus 5. You add 5 for two sides. We re the reason we only add 5 because if you add 5, it will cancel with this subtraction by 5. Okay, minus 5 plus 5, the left-hand side becomes 3. 4 plus 5 is 9. You add a 5 on bo to both sides. And then you're going to divide the two sides by 3. 3 is non-zero, of course. You divide the two sides by 3. Okay, so you get the solution set. So this is a, a very general discussion about the solutions, uh, about how to solve an equation. For different type of equation, we have different uh, strategy. But in general, those are the, uh, the legal process to find the solution. So in the next video, we are going to study the, the linear equation. Okay, the equation like this. We're going to study that and some more examples about the linear equations. Okay, we finish this uh, uh, short introduction and we will continue in the next video. Do the recommended exercise in the uh, in the corresponding part, and if if it's not in the discussion part, maybe it will be in the uh, in the next video. So. Just do whatever you think is already covered by this. Okay, just stop this video and we will continue a different video, another video. Thank you very much.